Thanks, Girish. Uh, sorry to go back to a basics for one slide, but basically we know the source of a septic loosening is the particulate polydebris, which produces a cellular response, which causes osteoclasis and bone loss. That causes micromotion, which eventually creates a self-propagating cycle. So we know that when the polydebris linear wear is less than 0.1 millimeters per year, you don't have catastrophic osteolysis. So here you have a case 25 years post uh, uncemented uh, hip replacement. And what do you see? The implants are well fixed. You can see the poly wear because the uh, head has migrated superiorly and you see osteolysis in the uncemented cup. The osteolysis occurs behind the cup because the particles enter through the holes in the cup and along the proximal femur. The answer for this sort of situation is a liner exchange with or without bone grafting. And a similar situation 21 years post a cemented hip. Again, you see well-fixed implants, you see polyware, and you see osteolysis. In the cemented cup, usually it occurs around the rim of the cup and in the ischium and along the proximal femur. Because you have a good uh, cement mantle distally, the particles do not go to the tip of the stem. Unfortunately, the answer here is not so simple. Being a cemented cup, you need to do a full revision. Now, what happens if your polyware is uh, linear wear is more than uh, 0.2 millimeters a year? You know that you have catastrophic uh, osteolysis and rapid failure. So this case, the triad stem just eight years post surgery and see what you've got. Absolutely thinned out poly, sorry. Progressive radiolucency, there's osteolysis all along the femur, including the tip because the particles get pumped there. And you have thinning of the cortex and ballooning of the cortex. And here you need to do a revision. We are not really going into the details of how and when the revision, how you do that. Occasionally, it's not always polyware which causes aseptic loosening. You can have poor cementing which can cause it. Here, just three years post uh, surgery, you can see the stem is, is in varus and uh, there's very poor cement along the distal end of the stem. So you have uh, progressive radiolucent lines, subsidence, and a break in the cement mantle. Now remember, progress. Uh, a radiolucent line in a cemented hip is not a sign of loosening. The line has to be progressive. And again, this required a revision. So when you have an unhappy patient post uh, total hip replacement, you need to first try and understand the mechanism of failure. Uh, aseptic loosening is the commonest cause of failure in the National Joint Registry of UK, though I, that incidence is coming down because of better bearing surfaces and better techniques. In US, it's already third after infection and dislocation. So how do I evaluate an unhappy patient? The first thing I do is I just do the basic clinical X-ray, CBC, ESR, and CRP. If I feel this is a straightforward case of an aseptic failure, I'll just go ahead without further test, do a revision. If I have a suspicion of infection, I'll do an aspiration. I won't do any further tests before the aspiration. And if I don't know what's going on, then I'll do some further tests. This may be depending on my clinical suspicion, dynamic X-ray, CT, MRI, metal levels, or a local injection. Now in the as uh, and then based on that, I'll either observe or uh, operate the patient. What do you send in your hip aspirate? A lot of people are sending gram stain that's totally of no benefit at all. You have to send your uh, WBC count and for chronic infections, uh, positive value would be more than 3000 per millimeter cube with 80% polymorphs. Remember, this value does not apply for an acute reaction where 
the value will be much higher. Your culture positive is fairly specific for infection, but a negative culture does not mean you uh, don't have infection. You can, from the synovial fluid, you can do other tests like the leukos uh, leukocyte esterase test, the CRP, alpha defense in or synovial show. And if your radiologist can use a 14 gauge needle rather than a thinner needle, your chance of getting a positive culture because you get some tissue <coughs> is much higher. So now if your aspirate has come positive, it means you have infection. If it comes negative and the suspicion of infection is low because there are no criteria, then infection is highly unlikely. But if it is negative, but there is still other criteria to make you suspect infection, then I would do the other tests. And to me, I still personally feel PET is better than MRI, though I'd like to talk to Aditya about that. Now let's look at some other cases of aseptic loosening. This is one of my own patients. I did a hip replacement, a very enthusiastic patient, loves yoga. Everything looked pretty hunky-dory. The patient was doing great till one day at around one year down the line, she suddenly came and said, I started getting severe pain in my hip, and this was the x-ray. I did scans. Obviously, the cup is loose. I couldn't really figure out why, but essentially my suspicion was that the patient was doing a lot of yoga, sitting cross-legged. This is a 28 millimeter head. I had used the lip and I suspect the femoral neck was impinging on the hip and that is what was caused the loosening. So I revised the stem. I've managed to go higher with the cup. I Sorry, I revised the cup, managed to go higher with the cup, used a non-liner, uh, uh, used a uh, liner without a rim and used a 32 head and the patient is now fine. And one more patient, again, you can see there's no osteolysis, but the, and the cup is well cemented, but the stem is completely loose. It has subsided with massive osteolysis. This is because of motion of the stem because of uh, poor cementing and that required revision with a long stem. And these are the days when 32 and 36 heads were not available in India. Thank you.